and start this session. Uh, the first talk uh, is given by Federico Becca from the University of Trieste on transformer wave function for quantum spin models. So, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation. Indeed, I'm coming from two floors above, so not far. Uh, and uh, I will talk about uh, uh, transformer wave functions for the pointer doesn't work very well, but let's say transformer wave function for quantum spin models. And uh, let me say that all credits go to Riccardo, who is in the audience. I saw him there. And uh, our uh, chairman, Luciano, uh, who really did uh, the, the dirty work uh, uh, improving uh, the uh, architecture of the uh, neural network. So for any technical question, please ask them. Okay, I will, they, they are really the persons who worked uh, in the code, uh, optimizing everything. I was uh, uh, mostly interested in understanding how these uh, wave functions can be applied to uh, challenging problems in uh, uh, um, frustrated magnetism. So uh, I will start uh, uh, slowly, uh, just uh, trying to motivate a bit uh, and uh, giving uh, a very short introduction on previous wave functions, more physically motivated, and then uh, I will describe transformer states. So I already saw that uh, in this uh, workshop, uh, uh, people uh, discussed about uh, spin models, uh, even Hubbard models. Uh, so you should be more or less uh, already in the game. But let me uh, just uh, uh, emphasize that uh, here I'm interested in uh, mod insulators in which the charge degrees of freedom are uh, frozen. Let's say in, in real uh, mod insulators, indeed, uh, uh, charge are still uh, uh, around, but. Uh, uh, here I'm interested in models in which I only have uh, uh, spin degrees of freedom. So spin fluctuations are present and they are modeled by Heisenberg Hamiltonian and the simplest one is uh, the one in which you have a spin one half interacting on some lattice with the nearest neighbor interactions. And uh, the, the funny uh, story comes when uh, frustration is present meaning that uh, you have essentially in the lattice uh, odd uh, so loops with uh, an odd number of uh, edges. So the simplest one uh, is uh, a triangle in which uh, if uh, the, anti the, the coupling is antiferromagnetic, then uh, uh, the system is frustrated because you can put, uh, you can anti-align two spins, but then the third one is indeed uh, uh, frustrated. And every time you have uh, lattices in which you have uh, uh, couplings, uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, for forming loops uh, with uh, an odd uh, number of uh, uh, edges, you have frustration. And frustration is interesting because, indeed, you can destroy uh, antiferromagnetic order or, indeed, any order down to zero temperature and have uh, uh, exotic phases. Now it's already 30 years and maybe they are no longer really exotic. And, uh, uh, but still, uh, let's say, interesting, and uh, we are still lacking uh, a full understanding uh, of uh, their properties. And uh, the simplest one uh, is the so-called resonating uh, valence bond state uh, proposed a long time ago. Indeed, now it's uh, almost a uh, uh, little bit more than 50 years that uh, Philip Anderson proposed a picture to describe a fully uh, disordered state uh, starting uh, from uh, uh, a singlet uh, in which uh, you couple two nearest neighbor spins and then uh, you cover all the lattice by these singlets and uh, you make them uh, resonating. And uh, if you do a, 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 a big, uh, exponentially large uh, uh, linear superpositions of all possible uh, uh, patterns in which you have singlets, uh, you have a state which is called resonating uh, valence bond, RVB. Indeed, this is a short range RVB because you only allow for nearest neighbor 
uh, singlets, and uh, this uh, is uh, pictorially uh, described a state which is not ordered and uh, may be stabilized in some realistic uh, uh, spin model. And indeed, uh, if you want to do calculations with uh, this kind of uh, wave function, uh, there, are, uh, there is uh, one uh, very insightful uh, way in which uh, starting from uh, your uh, spin uh, model, you perform uh, a, uh, you use uh, a, a fermionic uh, uh, decomposition of the spin by using the so-called Abrikosov fermions in which essentially you rewrite the spins in terms of uh, fermions. And uh, by doing this, you enlarge the Hilbert space. And if you want to be uh, to have a faithful uh, representation of the real Hilbert space in which you have only two uh, states uh, per site, you have uh, to impose a constraint. And uh, why this is uh, interesting? Because uh, uh, once uh, you rewrite the Hamiltonian in terms of these uh, uh, fermions, you can perform a, a sort of mean field uh, decoupling in which uh, you have a quadratic Hamiltonian that can be easily diagonalized and uh, from which uh, you can extract uh, the ground state. This ground state uh, has nothing to do with this original spin model because it lives uh, in the fermionic uh, Hilbert space in which you have four states uh, per site, empty, up, down, and doubly occupied. But then uh, you can go back to the original Hilbert space of the spin model by putting a Gutzwiller projection that just kills uh, all the configurations that are not allowed in the spin model. And so you have uh, a correct uh, uh, wave function for the spin model. And uh, of course, uh, this is a non-perturbative uh, uh, operator, and, but can be treated within uh, uh, variational Monte Carlo technique, exactly. And so you can indeed assess uh, the properties of, these, uh, of this kind of state by doing uh, a Monte Carlo sampling. And uh, this uh, gives a very transparent uh, interpretation of the wave function because uh, you have some variational parameter, a very limited uh, set. This is uh, the power and also the limitation, as uh, we will see, of this kind of approach because you have variational parameters that are essentially the, the, the hoppings and the pairings in this uh, mean field state. And uh, if you want also some uh, fictitious magnetic field in order to generate magnetic order in the unprojected state. And uh, the, the transparency comes from because the unprojected uh, uh, per, um, spectrum may suggest uh, indeed the, the actual properties uh, of the spin state, as uh, beautifully described uh, in this uh, original paper by Shaogang Wen. And indeed, uh, it turns out uh, that uh, gapped spin liquids uh, can be obtained whenever the fermion, gap, uh, the fermion spectrum is gapped, and gapless uh, spin liquids, like the U1 state that has been used, for instance, for the Kagome uh, lattice, Heisenberg model Kagome lattice, uh, is obtained when uh, you have uh, uh, gapless points in the fermion uh, uh, spectrum and uh, maybe you have uh, Dirac points. Using uh, this approach, indeed, uh, in the last years, uh, a few uh, models have been uh, studied, uh, mainly this uh, uh, J1, J2 Heisenberg model on the square lattice that uh, Nomura-san described uh, in the first uh, uh, talk in this week. And eventually, after many years, because this model has been introduced uh, in the late 80s by um, Dussault and Chandra, after many years, we are uh, reaching a final understanding of uh, the zero temperature phase diagram in which uh, you have an L phase, which is eventually destroyed by frustration, and uh, you have uh, a, a gapless spin liquid, this very small region of a gapless spin liquid, and then a valence bond solid. This uh, uh, picture has been already shown by Nomura-san on Monday. Uh, and indeed, uh, this comes from my talk in KITP, which is now, for some reason, uh, used in many talks. And so there are several works, including uh, the one by Nomura, uh, pointing out uh, uh, that, indeed, the phase diagram is uh, this kind. Uh, by the way, this, uh, this approach 
can be obtained within uh, a, a wave function, a fermionic wave function with very few parameters, I will tell you later, order uh, 10, even less. Of course, uh, as I told you, this approach uh, is limited by, because eventually you cannot really improve the wave function much. You have a very limited number of parameters, essentially order number of sites. One way that we used to, to improve uh, the parameters, I don't understand why this is always uh, greenish, uh, should be uh, black anyway. Uh, one way to improve this wave function is to apply lengths of steps on it. So to use this state as the starting state to do a Lanxos procedure. And indeed, this uh, can be done on small systems. And moreover, you can do a non-variational uh, zero variance extrapolation by computing the energy and the variance. And these are examples, uh, for instance, uh, in which I plot the energy as a function of the variance uh, for uh, a six by six uh, cluster. And this is the case in which uh, you do a random initialization, exactly like you do in real Lanxos uh, approaches, in which uh, you start randomly and then uh, eventually you converge to the ground state here. Uh, notice that the variance uh, can increase uh, during the Lanxos uh, uh, approach. Of course, of course, the energy is monotonically decreasing, and you have this kind of approach. And of course, if you start from a random state, you see you are very far, look at the scale, and it's difficult to reach eventually. You need many lengths of steps to reach the exact ground state. Instead, if you start from the, 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 the good state, which is the fermionic one, you're already very close. See, the scale is much smaller than that. And moreover, by performing very few lengths of steps, here just two, you lin linearly go to the exact and uh, uh, you are happy. So this is a way that uh, can, here one should be very careful because I should just touch. So uh, of course you can do many lengths of steps on small systems if you want to increase the lattice size, which is important to understand the thermodynamic properties. You cannot do many lengths of steps. You, in principle, can do, you can do only few. We did uh, only two because, of course, the algorithm uh, becomes very complicated. But still, uh, starting uh, from uh, the uh, variational state, uh, you can do up to 18 by 18 here. And uh, the extrapolation here on the 18 by 18, we did only one length of step. Uh, but the extrapolation remains uh, uh, linear. And uh, you can indeed uh, assess uh, the exact uh, ground state uh, energy. And here, this is uh, uh, coming from uh, a, a paper we did with, uh, with Sandro Sorella a long time ago. You can even construct uh, excitations uh, and do the lengths of step uh, uh, procedure on excited, excited uh, states. But you see that, uh, indeed, uh, in this approach, uh, the wave function uh, is uh, sites consistent in the sense uh, that the variance uh, per site remains almost constant by increasing uh, the uh, system sites. Okay? And this is very important if you want really to push uh, the uh, system, uh, the, the, the method to larger systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, this is, uh, one is, uh, if I remember correctly, one is the spin one excitation, the lowest spin one, and the other one is the lowest uh, singlet with momentum pi zero. Of course, you can fix. Also, this is uh, very nice because you can fix quantum numbers just by playing with uh, uh, fermions, and this uh, will uh, give you the quantum numbers of the uh, full uh, state. Okay? So in this sense, it's uh, transparent. Here, this is a table that uh, I think is, has been already uh, shown by, by um, Filippo last, um, last week and uh, uh, shows the energy of the 10 by 10 square lattice at uh, J2 equal 0.5, which is the sort of challenging point. And uh, these are the various uh, energies uh, obtained by different uh, methods. Uh, here there are references, but I couldn't uh, list the actual references. In, if you're interested, you can look at this uh, paper by uh, Ricardo and Luciano. And you see that, of course, here you don't have the exact uh, solution, but uh, all the methods are variational. Uh, by, by the way, these are done on a periodic uh, boundary conditions. And uh, so the lowest, uh, the better. And uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, 
our state with the two lengths of steps, which has five variational parameters, has a quite good energy. But still, since you have to fight with other methods, you really need to push uh, uh, to the lowest possible. And indeed, now I, I will uh, consider this uh, uh, transform away function, which indeed has many more parameters, but can reach very accurate uh, results. So the idea, indeed, is try to, in some sense, if, if you want, either confirm the results uh, with this uh, wave function or really understand if uh, there is something else uh, beyond it. So the idea is to use uh, uh, neural network uh, wave functions. And uh, of course, uh, everybody is uh, uh, happy to, to cite uh, the work by Giuseppe and Matthias Troyer in science, uh, who really introduced uh, the idea of using uh, neural networks uh, to parameterize uh, uh, quantum states. So the idea is that uh, you have an input configuration so with uh, spins, and then you have some uh, hidden uh, layer, some hidden uh, uh, neural, uh, neural network, in which essentially you do some uh, uh, linear combination, you apply some non-linear function, and uh, at the end of the day, you obtain a number, which in general must be complex or uh, real, if uh, you know uh, that the wave function is uh, maybe real with some uh, uh, trivial signs, and uh, use this uh, to extract uh, uh, the logarithm of the wave function, and uh, the variational parameters now are uh, inside the, the hidden uh, unit. Okay, so in principle, by increasing the number of, uh, of neurons here, you can uh, reach, uh, uh, you can increase the number of variational parameters, and in principle, uh, you reach uh, the exact uh, solution. In principle, because indeed, uh, the, the, the minimization of the energy with respect to all these parameters may be very hard, because the landscape becomes very complicated. And indeed, uh, um, this is the simplest possible, which is... Uh, um, um, restricted uh, Boltzmann machine, and uh, even though in principle it's possible to describe any state, uh, in practice uh, it's uh, not uh, so, uh, it's not true, especially when the system size becomes order a uh, few hundred, uh, even, even less uh, sites. So the idea proposed by Luciano and uh, Riccardo was uh, uh, to uh, consider uh, transformer states in which uh, essentially you start uh, always uh, with uh, the spin uh, configuration in the, in, the, in, the, in the lattice. You use uh, a deep uh, neural network uh, here uh, which uh, has uh, the structure of a vision transformer to obtain uh, a hidden representation, uh, another uh, set of vectors uh, Z, and then you apply a restricted uh, shallow Boltzmann machine to this hidden representation. And uh, with that, uh, you obtain uh, the logarithm of uh, the wave function. And uh, so the idea is that, indeed, you can reach a very good accuracy not applying the Boltzmann machine to the original uh, spins, but to this uh, hidden uh, representation. Then Luciano was very proud to show this uh, slide. Uh, again, for any technical question, refer to the, our chairman. Uh, so uh, the idea uh, in more detail is uh, to uh, construct uh, uh, patches of, uh, uh, of spins in the lattice. So you have your original lattice, so square lattice, for instance. You split the lattice into uh, small patches, so two by two, for instance, and then uh, with these patches, uh, you project uh, into some uh, d-dimensional uh, space of vector x. And then uh, you use uh, this uh, transformation uh, uh, typical of the transformer, uh, depending on uh, this uh, um, variable h, which is an hyperparameter, which is the head. And then uh, the final uh, uh, set of uh, vectors uh, is mapped uh, into this uh, y vector, and eventually the hidden uh, um, hidden uh, representation is obtained by 
uh, summing all these uh, vectors. And then uh, you obtain uh, the wave function by taking uh, a, a, a complex uh, object. So in order to, let's say, to see if this architecture works uh, in actual uh, non-trivial examples, the first uh, exercise uh, we did uh, was to consider the J1, J2 model in 1D. So here you have a one-dimensional chain. You have uh, spin one half uh, interacting uh, antiferromagnetically at both uh, nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor. And indeed, also in this case, uh, J2 introduces a frustration. The phase diagram for this model is very well uh, um, known. You have a gapless uh, state. Of course, here we are in 1D, so there is no magnetic order because of the Mermin-Wagner theorem. So you have a gapless uh, uh, state when J2 is small, and indeed uh, the critical point is now known with very uh, high accuracy. Then uh, in, if you increase J2 more, you enter into a gapped phase, which is uh, uh, first uh, uh, commensurate, and then uh, it becomes uh, incommensurate. And indeed, many works uh, have uh, clarified the phase diagram of this. Uh, for this one-dimensional case, you can even apply DMRG. Uh, uh, Luciano was really choosy because he wanted to uh, compare uh, the transformer with DMRG with the same uh, conditions. So he pushed uh, uh, DMRG calculations with periodic boundary conditions, which is indeed not really the, the, the best choice for DMRG. And uh, um, uh, the calculations have been done here for uh, 100 sites. And uh, indeed, at the beginning, uh, uh, Luciano told me that the DMRG calculations with periodic boundary, condi periodic boundary conditions uh, gave an energy higher than the, uh, the transformer. So this also suggests uh, the, the accuracy of the transformer state. But eventually, he succeeded to have a DMRG energy lower than uh, the VIT. So this is uh, the accuracy of the VIT with respect to the DMRG, which is, let's say, exact, or hopefully so. And uh, as a function of uh, some hyperparameter, this uh, H, which is the number of uh, hats you have uh, in the transformer, and D, which is the dimension of uh, the space in which uh, you project. And you see that, of course, if you increase either D or H, you increase the energy, and uh, you arrive to very accurate results. So for the unfrustrated case, which is sort of simple, you can reach uh, eventually with the best state uh, an accuracy which is order 10 to the minus uh, uh, 7, let's say. To be pessimistic, maybe 10 to the minus 6, but which is uh, uh, crazy for this uh, large system. For uh, a frustrated case, uh, like uh, J2 equal 0.4 or 0.8, the accuracy is a little bit uh, larger, and indeed the, the, the system is uh, more difficult, but still uh, the accuracy in percentage uh, is, uh, let's say, order 10 to the minus 3, which is, uh, let's say, unbelievable uh, uh, with, uh, let's say, other kind of uh, wave functions like uh, the, the one constructed with the fermions, okay? And uh, not only the energy, uh, which eventually is, uh, let's say, not so important, but also correlation functions are very uh, accurate. And indeed, this is, uh, the, these are the spin-spin correlation functions as a function of the distance. And uh, these are uh, the, the, the full dots, red dots, are the transformer results. And the empty dots are the DMRG. So you see that they completely agree, and they reproduce the critical behavior of the spin-spin correlations in the gapless state, J2 equal to 0. And remarkably, also, the, when you increase J2, you can compute correlation functions like dimer-dimer uh, correlation functions, which uh, uh, go to 0 in the gapless state, or uh, um, in the gapped, where they uh, converge to a finite value because you break the translational symmetry, and so you have dimer order. And you see that, again, the, um, the agreement uh, between uh, DMRG and uh, uh, transformers uh, are really astonishing. And uh, you see that uh, you can even uh, describe uh, um, incommensurate states in which the structure factor, the Fourier transform of the spin-spin correlations in the, 
for j2 equal to 0, you have a peak uh, here, which is diverging like the logarithm of the sides, uh, and the peak is in pi. Then it stays in pi when also when it's gapped, but then it moves towards uh, pi half. And uh, again, the accuracy is uh, sort of uh, embarrassing, uh, even though you can uh, distinguish here the fact that uh, you are not 100% uh, uh, correct. But still, let's say the main features uh, are optimally reproduced. So let's go to 2D. This was a benchmark because, uh, again, the model was not as simple as uh, the easing model in transverse field that, uh, in many cases, uh, it's considered to do a benchmark. Uh, in that case, the J1, J2 in 1D is uh, non-trivial, especially because the sign structure is not known for J2 larger than, uh, than zero. So in the easing model, uh, uh, the, the, the ground state signs of the wave functions are uh, known, and this uh, helps a lot uh, in looking for the, in constructing the neural network. Here, the, the, the Marshall sign rule is violated uh, for the whole phase diagram except uh, J2 equal to zero and J2 equal 0.5, which is the Majumdar Gosh. And uh, indeed, using uh, this complex uh, RBM at the end, uh, you can indeed uh, recover the exact uh, signs if you compare, for instance, on uh, exact diagonalizations on small systems. But it's, uh, say, trivial, but not so trivial example. So now let's move uh, to 2D. We didn't want to uh, consider J1, J2 on the square lattice, uh, because there, there are too many works. So we looked uh, for uh, a different problem, maybe less studied, which is the so-called shastri sutherland model, which is uh, still on the square lattice. Um, you have uh, nearest neighbor interaction on the square plaquette, so this is the simplest uh, Heisenberg model, and you have uh, a, a diagonal term uh, only on few plaquettes. You see that uh, in the J1, J2, you have diagonal bonds everywhere. Here, here you have only one out of four. And uh, again, when J prime is finite, you put some frustration because in the nail phase, these two, state, these two spins are parallel. parallel. Remarkably, let's say this model, which is called shastri satellan because they introduced that in the 80s, just for a simple example in which you can construct an exact ground state in some limiting case. This has a, a, nice, uh, a nice description of this uh, uh, compound, which is the strontium copper borate, uh, which has uh, very interesting uh, uh, physical properties, uh, especially when uh, you put an external magnetic uh, field, because you have a sequence of uh, magnetization plateau, and uh, if you want to know about that, uh, the best uh, person is uh, Frédéric Milat in, uh, in, in Lausanne, who spent uh, his life to clarify the, connect the, the, to clarify the properties of this material. Um, they say we are not interested uh, in the physics uh, with uh, um, magnetic field. Indeed, uh, this could be interesting to do one day or another with the transformer. But at the moment, uh, we study the ground state uh, properties. And uh, uh, for that, there are uh, very few studies. One is by, indeed, uh, uh, Frederick with uh, Philippe Corbots, who is uh, the guy who essentially uh, promoted uh, uh, IPEPS method, tensor networks. And according to them, the phase diagram has uh, an L state. Of course, when uh, J is large, uh, you have uh, an L phase because, uh, let's say, J prime uh, is small and the frustration is small. And then uh, when, uh, indeed, uh, J prime uh, is large, you have essentially a dimer phase in which you decouple the lattice into uh, uncoupled uh, dimers over uh, J prime bonds. And in between, you have uh, a, uh, this uh, um, uh, green phase, which is a plaquette state in which you form uh, strong uh, um, plaquette correlations uh, in, the, in the empty uh, squares. And uh, recently, uh, Ander Sandwick proposed uh, uh, the possibility to have a spin liquid phase in between the nail and the plaquette phase. And so we wanted to assess uh, uh, this. And indeed, we confirm by using the, the, the transformer state that this spin liquid region can be there. So 
uh, this is uh, quite technical. You discuss the importance uh, of uh, using symmetries uh, in, uh, in this uh, job. And indeed, uh, here uh, you have, of course, uh, symmetries. Uh, the, the unit cell contains uh, four sites, so you have only translations by, by two. And then you have uh, uh, rotations uh, um, around the center of empty plaquettes uh, and the reflections uh, 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 on a diagonal. And indeed, you can implement uh, these uh, symmetries by hand by just uh, summing uh, over different uh, uh, states, uh, applying uh, the, uh, the symmetries uh, to, the, to the spin uh, configurations. And by the way, the sum here, it's, let's say, not so expensive because uh, it's fixed uh, uh, and doesn't depend uh, on the uh, cluster size. So the results, first of all, uh, some uh, benchmark, just to be sure that uh, we love uh, uh, doing benchmarks before plugging into the real problem. So this is on the six by six cluster in which uh, you can do exact diagonalization. So this is uh, the um, relative error, again, so it's the energy compared to the exact energy when you change uh, the number of, uh, uh, of parameters either in increasing uh, the number of heads or the dimension D. And indeed here you see that the best, uh, the best uh, possible state uh, with this number of parameters, you reach an accuracy which is uh, order 10 to the minus four. But mo most importantly, the spin-spin correlations uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, six by six uh, are uh, um, essentially they reproduce the exact uh, uh, result by Langsos. Here, let's say this is plotted uh, along this uh, a snake uh, uh, path, oh, sorry. But let's say for fixing the spin here, you fixing the spin, I think, uh, here, you measure all the possible spins, and you see that indeed the, the VIT, uh, uh, the transformer state, uh, reproduces uh, the exact. And if you go to larger systems, then you don't have exact uh, solutions. You can compare with DMRG, and DMRG in 2D doesn't work very well, so under Sandwick D that on uh, cylinders, cylinders uh, means uh, clusters with L times 2L, uh, periodic boundary conditions in one direction and open in the other. Of course, uh, fixing the sides, uh, the results will be different because the setting is different, but uh, if you perform a side scaling increasing L, so you can do it on a torus L by L, with our wave function or with the cylinder DMRG, you see that uh, you converge uh, essentially to the, to, the same, uh, to the same energy within uh, error bars. So we believe uh, that uh, on the torus uh, we, uh, we, are, we are fine. So having uh, done this, uh, we can go into the actual uh, study of, uh, of the problem. Uh, first of all, we would like uh, to assess uh, magnetic order, so we compute, uh, we compute uh, the uh, structure factors, spin-spin correlations in k-space, uh, and uh, we measure the, the order parameter for the nail state, uh, taking k equal pi pi, and these are the results for three different values of uh, uh, j over j prime. And you see that uh, you go from uh, uh, this value in which uh, you extrapolate uh, to a finite value to a, cis, a, 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 a case in which uh, you extrapolate uh, to, to zero. So by changing uh, the value of, uh, of the ratio j over j prime, you go from a null state in which the magnetization is finite to a state in which the magnetization is uh, zero. Now, in order to understand if uh, zero magnetization means a spin liquid or uh, uh, plaquette, you need to compute the plaquette order parameter, in which essentially you take an operator in which you take a permutation over four sites on, in, a, in a square plaquette, and you construct this operator here, and uh, you compute uh, correlation functions at distance r. So you compute uh, plaquette, plaquette, Correlations, if you have uh, plaquette order, this uh, will go to, um, to a con, uh, let's say, this will oscillate, but oscillations will remain, uh, let's say, finite at large distance, so you can uh, take the order parameter like the difference between uh, this correlation at the maximum distance minus uh, the one at the previous distance, 
So in a phase in which you don't have uh, order, this uh, difference will go to zero, otherwise this uh, will stay finite. And here I show, not so clear with this, uh, with the, this kind of colors, but these uh, are correlations uh, for uh, uh, indeed the plaquette phase in which you see that they remain uh, oscillating uh, while here uh, they, they, uh, they are uh, melting. And uh, what you can do is uh, to do the side scaling of the plaquette uh, order parameter. And uh, you clearly see that uh, in, uh, in when uh, j over j prime is small, you see that this uh, uh, goes to a finite value. Uh, while uh, if uh, uh, j prime uh, j over j prime is larger, this uh, will go to zero. So combining these results uh, with the previous ones uh, on uh, on magnetic order, you can draw uh, the phase diagram in which uh, indeed you have uh, a small but still finite regions between uh, 78 and uh, more or less 82 in which uh, both uh, correlations uh, are vanishing uh, in the thermodynamic limit, okay? And then we can, uh, in some sense, uh, confirm the, uh, the results uh, previously obtained by Anders uh, and collaborators. So I'm, uh, this is the, my last uh, slide. I still have maybe four minutes. So I would like uh, just to say a few words about uh, neural networks because I think that indeed, uh, they are pro promising tools uh, for, uh, for studying correlated uh, systems. And uh, in my opinion, uh, their success will be related to the possibility really to tackle important uh, and unsolved uh, problems uh, like the Hubbar model, uh, the J1, J2, and uh, so non-trivial spin on electronic models. Of course, there are, uh, let's say, they are still uh, challenging, and, uh, uh, but let's say, it's important to study this kind of model instead of insisting on, uh, let's say, the easing model on transverse field. And uh, the other important point is that really we need large clusters in order to distinguish between competing phases, like uh, I'm referring to you, not <laughs> but let's say, because for me the Hubbard model is particular. I like, the, I, I'm born with the Hubbard model, so for me, I, I would like, uh, before uh, dying to know what's the exact uh, uh, ground state of the Hubbard model and uh, to understand the competition between, for instance, uh, stripes uh, and uh, superconductivity, you really need uh, to push uh, uh, to large uh, systems. So it's important to benchmark everything on small systems, but eventually, let's say, the problems are defined on the thermodynamic limit, so you, we need to go to large uh, clusters, even if uh, we don't have an accuracy of 10 to the minus seven. So uh, having an accuracy of 10 to the minus two is already maybe enough uh, on a very large uh, systems. And this uh, is, let's say, hard to be obtained with the MRG or other methods. And uh, another problem will be, let's say, to me to clarify a bit uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what, what is the role of different uh, pieces in the arch architecture in order to, let's say, uh, to have an understanding uh, in, in, the, in the wave function that I showed before, we have a understa direct understanding, uh, let's say, or at least you can uh, have an understanding looking at uh, the unprojected spectrum. Here, really, they are still uh, black boxes in which you have a lot of parameters and it's not easy to interpret uh, the physical properties uh, before computing correlation functions. Even the MRG have done uh, this kind of, uh, of, of job by, let's say, rephrasing uh, that in terms of uh, NPS and so on. And the last uh, is, uh, let's say, to, 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 to construct uh, the excitation spectrum from the ground state. Of course, uh, you can do it uh, by doing a completely unrelated uh, optimization, you take, uh, you, you change the quantum numbers, you re-optimize everything and then you are happy. But let's say, would be nice uh, to construct excitations uh, starting from the ground state and applying some operator to it, a la Feynman, like uh, the, the sound waves uh, are constructed by applying uh, the density operator to the ground state. So in this sense, uh, would be, would be, would be important. 
especially because the elementary excitations are, are, are needed to, to fully characterize the, uh, the, the, the phase uh, that we are looking. So for instance, we still don't know if uh, the, the spin liquid that we find uh, is gapless or gapped. So don't ask me this question because I don't know. Uh, and for the rest, uh, I'm, I, I finish here. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, nice talk. Uh, about the black box issues, right? Did you try to uh, visualize, extract the weights of the different, is, is a more technical question, let's say, of the uh, attention heads in the, uh, in your model? So just take the, because that would, suggest which type of correlations they are actually extracting? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, and, uh, and the result that they uh, decay uh, with the distance uh, and they recover automatically, automatically the rotational symmetry of the model. So uh, Federico didn't show it, but uh, yeah. So of course they, they decay, let's say that the point is, uh, let's say in some cases to understand if they decay maybe exponentially, then it's gapped, uh, if they decay power law, it's uh, not, okay, so you, you not gapped. This I think uh, it's uh, still not, uh, not done. But this, this is a kind of uh, example. And uh, about the, the symmetries, did you implement as a preprocessing step or was it in the network itself? So th there are networks which are, you know, by construction uh, invariant. No, no, we, we, we did a, a sum, so. In the net. For the chassis, so let's say, it depends because you, you do the, say, maybe he can explain better, but you do these patches. So for instance, in the J1, J2, you construct two by two patches, and so you break the translational symmetry by, by, by one, not by two. So by two is included in the network. In the chassis satellite, you already start from, uh, a unit cell which is two by two, so you don't break, uh, uh, so the, it's fully translational invariant in, directly in the network. But for the rotations and reflections, you impose it uh, right. a posteriori. Thank you. So I think it's just a more technical question and I probably missed uh, this information in your talk, but I, I just would like to have a comparison of how the VIT and the DMRG compare to each other in terms of computational cost in your spin model. The computational uh, sense. Yeah. This is, uh, let's say, not easy to, to compare, I think, uh, in general. I don't know, let's say, first of all, because they work on different, so if you want, of course, if you want to do, then he will be more precise, but if you want to do really a one by one correspondence in which, for instance, you take 10 by 10 with periodic boundary conditions, of course, uh, the, the bit wave function is happy and then the MRG is less happy. And so, most probably it will perform better, but because this is not the optimal, uh, let's say, setup for the MRG. And so the comparison, let's say, I would say that uh, a direct and, uh, let's say, um, faithful comparison is hard. Because since they are quite uh, pre pretty much the same for most of your, your case, uh, I think it would be fair to, to give some estimate of this. Of course, it, let's say, the, uh, if, you, if you study 2D, the big problem in, in 2D is that uh, the MRG works on cylinders mainly. So you break the symmetry, not only rotational, but also translational because you have open boundary conditions. So in that, that sense, you, 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 you put a bias. So in this sense, uh, let's say, of course, if you use open boundary conditions with uh, VIT, maybe you will have many more parameters. So it's uh, not easy to do a fair comparison, I would say. I don't know if you want to add something. <laughs> This is the diplomatic. Uh, <laughs> uh, other questions? Um, so, so what would you say as now, like what do you see as the main uh, limitation now? Like you have been uh, uh, showing a lot of um, uh, impressive results. So what do you see, what do you see as the key problem now? Can you 
The key problem is to increase the size, because let's say for the Shastri Sutherland, uh, we were uh, lucky that, let's say, by doing uh, only, let's say, relatively small 14 by 14 uh, clusters, you, you can still understand uh, what's the behavior. But for instance, for the J1, J2, I think it's much more difficult uh, to really to, to go to the thermodynamic limit. So for me, the main, uh, let's say, motivation, I'm trying to push him to really to, 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 to do large systems. Because indeed, everything, let's say, the, our uh, computational power is increasing, but also the complexity is increasing. So it's like Achille and the turtle. We are always doing the same uh, kind of clusters. And now we can do perfectly 6 by 6, 8 by 8, uh, but let's say, uh, we really need to do large uh, systems. Could it also be that transformers are like, uh, say, like they are also computationally relatively expensive? Somewhat like they can, we know that they can be super powerful <laughs> if we can train them, but they're also quite expensive in training, essentially much, much harder than simple convolutional networks, say. Um, but like, so is it, is it more the computational time that is the limitation or is it um, something else? <laughs> computational and also the memory, I mm -hmm. think. Indeed, in my opinion, it uh, would be nice uh, to decrease the number of parameters. In this, uh, let's say, community, it seems that uh, the larger is the number of parameters, the better you are. <laughs> so you are uh, more and more happy if you have more and more variational parameters. But of course, everything becomes very complicated. So the, the, the idea would be to reduce the number of parameters in order to simplify the optimization. I completely... Great talk, thank you. Uh, since RNNs have had great success in describing spin systems, have you tried or at least played with the idea of trying to get samples from autoregressively doing a transformer? Because they can be masked and then you can get samples from a model like an RNN and then kind of bypass the whole Metropolis Hastings part of the story. The answer is um, I would say no. If you convince him, then it's uh, fine. <laughs> No, but we, we didn't, no, he didn't. Uh, maybe we can stop, okay. So you decide. <laughs> so uh, we can uh, thanks uh, Federico again. Uh,